2024 ended with a pretty big bang as far as desktop Macs are concerned. The iMac got a spec bump with some new color options, but probably the biggest update this year, maybe out of any product Apple released, was the Mac Mini where we saw a complete redesign. That has become the Mac that I primarily use, but I've been lucky enough to use every current desktop machine in Apple's lineup from these two machines to the M2 Max Mac Studio in my own workflow. And today I want to talk about what the experience has been like with the entire lineup, what's been good and bad about these desktop machines, what to look out for, and if you should even consider buying any of these at this stage or just wait for the next generation. So. If you are looking to buy any of these Macs or you just want to see how they stack up against each other, stick around and let's get into it. This video is sponsored by MagEasy. Hey everyone, Kyle Erickson here. There's a lot of value in buying a desktop Mac if you don't need the portability of a MacBook. More often than not, they're a lot cheaper than MacBooks with the same or higher level of performance. They have outstanding build quality and can sometimes just make a lot more sense for some folks. In the case of the Mac Mini or even the Mac Studio, they free up a lot of space that you just don't get with a traditional PC tower and the iMac might be even better in that regard as you've essentially just got everything packed into a monitor with one cable sticking out and it comes with everything you need right in the box. I actually prefer using a desktop Mac most of the time and over the last couple of years I've been able to buy and test out each of these machines. The iMac I've used in my workflow for a couple of weeks, but between the Mac Studio and the newer Mac Mini, they've both spent months at my desk and I would say that's given me somewhat of a unique perspective on them and I wanted to share what my overall experience has been like between all of these to finish off the year. Now, you can buy any of these new from Apple today, but the one that's the longest in the tooth is the Mac Studio, and at this point, probably makes the least amount of sense to buy out of any of the current lineup. The model that I used, I would say for around six to eight months, was the base M2 Max Mac Studio, which comes in at 1999 USD. That model has a 12 core CPU and 30 core GPU, 32 gigs of RAM and a 512 gig SSD and probably has the most versatile port selection with a total of six USB-C ports, four of which are Thunderbolt 4, an SD card slot, 10 gig ethernet port, two USB-A ports, a headphone jack and an HDMI port, but outside of that, you're really not gaining much anymore. While the M2 Max chip is still super powerful and can do almost anything you throw at it, the newer M4 Pro chips are around 45% faster in single core and 53% faster in multi-core performance. Even on the GPU where there are 10 more cores than the Mac Mini that I've got here, it's only 13% faster in Geekbench scores which excludes some of the newer tech like hardware enabled ray tracing. So it really isn't all that noticeable, but when you include some of those things, it does start to fall behind. Apple has made quite a few advancements since the M2 series in terms of GPU performance with things like hardware accelerated ray tracing and dynamic caching. And that has a drastic effect on overall performance in some apps that utilize it. In apps like Blender for instance, with Metal RT turned on, the M4 Pro's rendering performance is often around 30% faster than the Mac Studio. And personally, the only thing that I miss about the Studio at this point is the media engine with dual encoders where videos will still render out a little faster than the base or pro chips if you're creating content. Even outside of performance it really doesn't make much sense to buy the Mac Studio right now as an updated version will likely be released in the first half of next year that's gonna be loads more powerful than this. And if you need something sooner you're much better off with the M4 Pro Mac Mini which I absolutely love. This has been my favorite Mac over the last couple of years and a big part of that is everything you get packed inside such a small package. This particular machine that I have has the M4 Pro chip with a 14 core CPU and a 20 core GPU, has 48 gigs of RAM and a 1 terabyte SSD. And that is $200 more than the base Mac Studio at $2199 USD or the same price if you were to keep the storage at 512 gigs. Like I said, this is insanely small with it only being 5x5 inches in surface area, 
so it's super easy to place almost anywhere. I've been having a ton of fun designing cases for mine and setting it up in different ways at my desk, but it is still highly functional with a total of five USB-C ports, three of which are Thunderbolt 5 and also has an HDMI and Ethernet port. I mentioned this in my video last week, but you can potentially see huge gains in performance with Thunderbolt 5, where you'll see double the data transfer speeds in some cases, and it also has other benefits in terms of monitor support and power output, but accessories can be hit or miss right now, so I would say that's more about future-proofing yourself than anything, but overall performance on the Mini has been outstanding. It's been just short of two months now since I've been using this, and outside of the benchmarks that I went over earlier, the Mini has run everything in my workflow smooth as butter with zero hangups, whether that be working on these videos, building things in Blender or Fusion, coding, graphic design, photo editing, you name it. I've also started playing the long dark a ton on this machine, and gaming overall has been very smooth, where the fan does kick on most of the time, but it's so quiet you can barely hear it, and overall I've got nothing but good things to say about this machine. Now I do realize not everyone needs an M4 Pro machine, nor wants to spend $2000 on a desktop Mac, and quite honestly, even with all the apps that I use, the base M4 chip is still going to do almost everything that I need without any issues. It's kind of funny that the first M4 chip was actually in an iPad and not a Mac with a new M4 iPad Pro, which I also looked at this year and is a pretty incredible device. Speaking of which, before I dive into M4 Max, I want to take a minute to talk about this week's sponsor, MagEasy. MagEasy makes one of the coolest iPad cases called the Cover Buddy, and if you've been using Apple's new Magic Keyboard with the M4 iPad Pro, this case is a game changer. It's the only case on the market that is 100% compatible with a Magic Keyboard and has the perfect fitment with no gaps or issues. The cover buddy easily snaps right onto your iPad like a normal case would, but unlike other cases, you can then just magnetically connect it to the Magic Keyboard without any hassle, and it just naturally fits right into place. It feels secure, it's slim, and when you're done on your iPad, you can just close the Magic Keyboard up, and you can see there's zero gap with no pressure points, and everything comes together seamlessly. It's also got graphene thermal tech to keep your iPad cooler, premium leather that's stain resistant, and even a built-in Apple Pencil holder that supports wireless charging. Overall, it's a sleek protective product that's very well built. Right now, MagEasy is offering a holiday deal where you can buy two and get 20% off site-wide. Plus, you can use my code KYLE8 for 8% off any purchase, so please check out the link in the description below if you're interested. All right, back to the base M4 in the Max. Last year, I used the M3 MacBook Air as my sole machine for about three months or so, which by and large was totally fine. Moving up to the base M4, you get even more power, so I don't think that you need to go out and buy an M4 Pro machine unless you truly think that you'll need the extra power there. You can get a decent Mac Mini with a base M4 chip for under a thousand bucks, which is a great deal if all you're looking for is the computer itself. But another machine a lot of people don't think of, which is a great point of entry if you're looking to buy a desktop Mac with all the accessories is the new iMac. I bought the M4 iMac shortly after my Mac Mini, and that particular machine wasn't something that I was going to use long term myself, but was for my wife's office, and that was replacing a PC setup. That particular configuration was the model one step up from the base iMac with a 10 core CPU, 10 core GPU, 16 gigs of RAM, and a 256 gig SSD. That comes in at $1499 USD, so it's not the cheapest in the world, and the comparable Mac Mini is only $599, but as I mentioned in my iMac review, you also have to factor in that you get the magic keyboard and mouse, built-in speakers and webcam, and an amazing display that would normally cost you more if you bought everything separately, but regardless of which way you go there, the performance on the M4 is quite impressive. In benchmarks, the M4 chip is about 18% faster in single core performance, 22% faster in multi core, and 24% faster on the GPU over the M3, and handles most tasks like office use, graphic design, photo editing, and coding just fine. 
Even with video editing, if all you're doing is these style videos and something like Final Cut Pro, which is what I use, even though things are a hair slower than the Pro chips in some places, as long as you're staying away from GPU heavy plugins and effects, you'll have very few issues on these machines. The M4 chip does have the same media engine as the Pro chips, so render times are almost identical, but if you do plan on using your machine for things like 3D modeling or video editing with plugins that eat into your system usage, you'll probably want to reach for a Pro chip, but for 99% of people, this is probably all you need. Beyond performance, I've also been really impressed with both the picture and the sound, where there is absolutely no backlight bleed on the new iMac, which is an issue that the studio display is plagued by. It also has fantastic color accuracy covering 99% of the P3 gamut, a very good contrast ratio for an IPS LCD display like this at 1100 to 1, and the speakers are very crisp and clear regardless of volume level and have a surprisingly deep full sound given how thin the iMac is. The M4 iMac is only 11.5 millimeters thick and the design definitely looks and feels premium as it's entirely made from aluminum with a glass front panel. So no plastic and you'll notice on this model you'll get four Thunderbolt 4 ports versus the two that you'd normally get if you went with the base version. In my opinion, two ports just isn't enough, but four gives you a decent amount. Say, if you want to plug in an external drive or your phone and charge your keyboard or hook up an external monitor or something like that. I should also mention that these are only Thunderbolt 4, which you will find on all the base M4 machines, but like I said, it's still early days for Thunderbolt 5 and the benefits that you get with it are really only going to be noticeable in certain instances, so don't feel like you're missing out on that too much here. The only minor issue that I've had with the design isn't really a design flaw, but is more the fault of some third-party products that we're using here like a monitor light bar where the light bar mount will cut off the webcam, so I've just had to 3D print a little spacer for that to work, but the webcam itself also looks good, where you'll see a slight improvement over the M3 iMac. That is something that I noticed, but I really didn't put too much thought into, but since my wife has been using this full time and has been on calls, people have been commenting on how much better she looks on this webcam versus the old Razer one that was previously set up with a PC, and I think in a general sense, you're just getting a really well-rounded desktop machine that has very few issues. In fact, I think regardless of which way you choose to go here or which product you choose, these are all pretty great options. Depending on your needs, you might shift around a little bit in terms of which chipset or configuration you'd choose or what form factor suits you best, but these are all very solid, well-built Macs. The only thing that I'd say is if you have your heart set on a Mac Studio, it's probably worth waiting for the new version to come out because it's likely gonna be the same price and be a lot more powerful. And even if you're considering buying an M4 Pro Mac Mini and you're willing to wait a little bit, Chances are a new Mac Studio with the M4 Max will probably make a lot more sense at some point over a spec'd out M4 Pro Mini. That's exactly what happened with the M2 Pro Mac Mini that released about half a year before this current Mac Studio, but that being said, that's all speculation at this point and I think there's very little chance that you'll be upset with any of these machines. I'll be continuing to use the Mini at my desk for the foreseeable future, and any time I need to travel I can reach for my MacBook, which, by the way, I'm going to be doing the same style video next week for all the MacBooks that I used in 2024 to finish out the year, but that's all I have for you today. I hope you found this video useful or enjoyable. If you did, feel free to hit that like button. If you'd like to see more tech-related content or help me develop a set of flavored keyboard keycaps to add a little extra flavor into people's workdays, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next upload.